let me get started on this. I'll, I'll try to be less obnoxious. I talked a lot about the signings yesterday. And I understand some of the concerns. I truly understand because I share the concerns about Lance Lynn at his age. Um, after get blasted, getting blasted for all those home runs and just you know running out of gas and 5.73 RA and his fielding independent RA was just, just about as bad. He's got a lot to prove. He really, truly does. And I get the apprehension and I get the idea that people say, well, Maybe they could have um, gone for something that's more of a sure thing because of Lance and not knowing exactly, you know, which way his career trajectory is going. Was that just a kind of an outlier season or, or, or does that indicate a decline? Whatever. I mean, you're enti- everyone's entitled to question that because, again, there, there's certain, a lot of things have to get better. But I tell you what, Jim, and I went on this, uh, went on this yesterday and I've got some stuff to back up what I was saying. I really don't understand the criticism over the Kyle Gibson sign. I, I truly do not understand. And, you know, yet it, it just keeps coming and it keeps coming and it keeps coming. You know, reading online, I have people getting in touch with me. You know, they're calling them junk. They're calling them garbage. Oh, am I supposed to be impressed that they did a dumpster dive and brought this guy in? And I'm like, I don't get it. I just don't get it <laughs> because people apparently there is a is a massive disconnect from what the Cardinals need to do at the top of the rotation, which they haven't done. And the anger to this point or the frustration is justified. I get that. But Kyle Gibson has nothing to do with that because they didn't sign him to be a top-of-the-rotation guy, a number one or a two or number three. They signed him to be a four or a five. And he actually fits that role very, very nicely. And so if you're, if you're condemning the move because, well, they, we, where's the top starter? Okay, but you've got to separate that from what Gibson can do at the bottom of the rotation. Tim, I know you get it, but as a, are you as confused as I am? I, you know, did, I, did, did I miss something yesterday when Mo said, well, we really feel Kyle Gibson can fill our need at the top of the rotation. Now, if he would have said that, I would have been joining all y'all on Twitter going absolutely nuts. I, I, they, they signed him to be at the bottom of four or a five, and he is more than qualified to, to fill that role. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jim. No, I've, I've watched the text line today and listened to a lot of the shows, and I, I think – a lot of people are, are bunching the two together, top of the rotation and Gibson, and that's not the case. I think that's Just silly. That's the mistake. It's, it's kind of dumb, actually. It, it is, but I think that's where everybody's like, well, these guys aren't going to be uh, top of the rotation guys. You're right. They're not. That's not what they are. The, there's more work to be done. Cardinals still got to get to work and find a top of the rotation or two guy. Or with, two. Yes. With – well, however they're going to do, I still believe they're going to get a, a trade done somehow, some way to get bring sure. one of those guys. I really believe that. And then uh, where the other one comes from, if there's another one, I'm not sure because the other thing they got to do is they got to address a bullpen yet too. But that's we can have that conversation another day. But I I really believe, and when I have watched all the the stuff that's going on on the station today, that's where this thing gets muddled. Don't think that Kyle Gibson or Lance Lynn are going to be ones or twos or even the organization is thinking that. That's foolish. I think I'll say that. I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you realize you're telling people the same thing. That That's not what these guys are here for. Yeah. They're for the backside of the rotation, yeah. which was awful. Uh, I do see a and lot. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving Lynn out of this for now because mm-hmm. my focus is on Gibson. Sure, sure. Because he's, he's really good. If you're looking for a four or five starter, he is a great fit for that role. And, of course, rather than being, uh, you know, just hollering, going on Twitter to show, no, I'm more outraged than you. No, I'm more outraged than you. I just set my hair on fire. I'm so outraged. I'm not going to be one of those imbeciles. I'm going to back it up with facts because that's how I roll. 
But I, I, like I said, I'm leaving Lynn out of this because there's a lot of concern there. I wrote a piece and talked about it again yesterday. There are reasons why it could work, but there are reasons just as strong why it won't work for Lynn. Mm-hmm. Yep. But that has that has nothing to do with Gibson. You judge Gibson for what his role will be, and the Cardinals just found a hell of a number four, number five starter. And people want to say, Nicholas, I like you, Bernie. Normally I'm with you on this stuff, but have you lost your mind? What do you mean? Well, can I can I point a couple things out, if it's all right? Sure, sure. Can I point a couple things out? Hmm. <laughs> he had 17 quality starts last season, and people said, well, you know, quality starts nothing, Bernie, because all you got to do is pitch six innings and allow no more than three runs. What's so great about a four... Point five zero ERA. Nothing's great about it, but that rarely happens. A quality start, you know, I looked it up today. You know what the ERA is? If you take every quality start in terms of an entire baseball season, the e, the ER, the average ERA for all those quality starts is just under two. Okay? Okay. So, in other words, most, if not all, but a, a large percentage of those quality starts are earned. Last year, Gibson's ERA in his quality starts was 2.57, and he went seven or more innings 11 times in the 17 starts. And obviously, he ne- he never allowed more than um, three runs in the 17 quality starts, but he also had seven or eight times where he allowed none, one, or two. These were not cheap quality starts. He pitched well enough to actually earn it and deserve it. They said, well, Bernie, I think that's just a dumb stat. I've heard that a million times through the years. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe there's this. Every time a starting pitcher gives his team a quality start, that team's going to win between 70%, 75% of the time. Um, huh. I'm thinking that's pretty good. And said, so, well, you know, the, you know, the quality start things overrated. I'm not sure. Uh, if anything, now it's probably more valuable. Why would I say that? Well, the five-inning start is the new normal. Got, guys don't even pitch enough six-inning games to where they can earn a quality start. So, in other words, the frequency of quality starts is decreasing, and it's been decreasing, so that makes them more valuable because when you get one, you got about a 70% chance and more or higher, at least 70% chance of winning the game. So, yeah, there's value in a quality start, despite, despite what all these dumbbells say. And usually the quality start is a really good job in terms of the ERA in that quality start or over the course of the season. Um, anyway, so those of you say, well, you know, quality start doesn't mean anything. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a junk stat, Bernie, and that, that's for your junk pitcher. Okay, you know, yeah, okay, you're right. Gave up two runs or less in 11 of those 17 starts and never more than three. Anyway, uh, when, he, when he pitched, um, a, when he gave the Orioles a quality start last year, they were 13 and four. That's a winning percentage is seven, six, four. I think that's pretty good. But what do I know, right? This team should be thankful for that. Based on last uh, year's record. Now, now, here's the kicker. Yep. Oh, I got a bunch of kickers. <laughs> I love this. I, I was surprised to find it. Let me read you quality start totals last year, right? Sure, sure. Um, Kyle Gibson, 17. Sonny Gray, 17. Aaron Nola, 15. Dylan Cease, 12. Shane Bieber, 12. Tyler Glasnow, 9. This holiday, instead of giving them something nice, why not gift them somewhere nice? During the IHG Hotels and Resorts Cyber Sale, you can do just that and save. Shopping is easy in the IHG One Rewards app, where you'll save 20% on travel across 6,000 plus global destinations. And if you want to gift yourself somewhere nice, go ahead. You'll earn more and save more during the Cyber Sale. Check out all the deals at IHG.com backslash cyber sale. Terms apply. He had more. Huh. Uh, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's got more quality starts than Aaron Nola. I mean, 
Doesn't that get people to just say, well, maybe I've been kind of stupid going on Twitter and making an ass of myself. Maybe I ought to like really look, just judge this guy based on what his role will be. When you are, are you kidding me? You got a number four or five starter, and he's giving you more quality starts than what Aaron Nola gave the Phillies last year. Are you kidding me? Hmm. Last year he had more quality starts than Scherzer, Verlander, or Eduardo Rodriguez, Jose Barrios, Kodai Senga, Bryce Elder, Marcus Stroman. Nathan Evialdi, Eovaldi, sorry, and um, and many, many more. His 17 quality starts were only three less than what Jordan Montgomery had for the Cardinals and the Rangers. And then I already had somebody, because I wrote something about this, oh, well, you know, but don't you realize that those other guys got hurt? So how, how is it fair to, like, all like judge them all equally? They didn't have as many opportunities to build up quality starts. Yes, yes, that's the point. <laughs> That's exactly the point. You know how you get a quality start? Well, the first obligation is you actually got to make the start. You, you got to make 30 plus starts and you got to be available so you at least have the chance to make a quality start and a chance to influence the outcome of the game for your team. As Larissa say, first obligation, got to go to the post, got to get to the starting gate. So what, I'm supposed to denigrate Gibson because all these other guys got hurt? The point is, he doesn't get hurt. There's certainty here. He will take the ball. He will give you close to 200 innings. There's only only three starting pitchers in the majors that have thrown more innings than Gibson since 2014. He's a number four or number five starter. Where do you get all of these quality starts and the and the heavy innings load? How many number four, number five quali- uh, starting pitchers give you all that? If anything, like he's above that level, but they're going to put him in that level. And the bottom of the rotation will be much stronger than it was last year or maybe even the season before when the Cardinals again had to go out and, you know, scramble to sign – trade for pitchers unless of course y'all want all of your Gibson critics uh, want to um, you know you want to you want those four and five starts excuse me man that those four and five starter roles you want them taken by let's, let's get Woodford back in here let's get Hudson back in here you know who handled all those starts last year Drew Rom, Libertor, Woodford, Dakota Hudson Steven Matz, who really was a non-factor, only started 17 games, but he wasn't a top three starter. Um, you put Zach Thompson on that list, and he, he was one of the guys handling the four and the five, or the four of the five. But he at least shows potential, and he's a young guy. But you, you want more of that in 2024? Well, no, Bernie. I, I, I just want I want better than that. Of course. Well, you got it because Gibson fits the bill. And if if you can't if you refuse to pay attention to facts, well, that's your problem. It ain't mine. You need to kind of you know get try to find some enlightenment before you savage a guy and call him trash. Okay. Um. Anyway, there's more. Oh, yeah, there's more. Oh, oh, one of the favorite rip jobs that uh, I've seen. Well, I just can't believe the Cardinals wasted $12 million on this guy. Okay. Fangraphs valuations, which is a long-standing tradition at Fangraphs. They take a player's performance. They tell you what it was worth and like, present-day value, value in that season based on what the prices are for pitchers, okay? Mm-hmm. You know what? He, so they, they, the Cardinals spent twelve million to bring Kyle Gibson in here. You know what his, um, you know what his performance value is worth according to the FanGraphs formula last year. Twenty point five million. More than I thought. That's yeah. It was fifteen million in twenty twenty two, twenty twenty two, and twenty five million in twenty twenty one. I can't believe they wait. They threw away all that money on this bum. He's garbage. What are they doing? 
I don't know. It seems to me they're getting they got pretty they're getting a pretty damn good value for a four or five starter who's outperformed the the, the perception of him as a pitcher. I think it's pretty good value. Maybe they can take the savings and apply it to you know towards uh, well they got boy that's money saved they can put towards a better starter or maybe you know getting a reliever that they can count on in late late innings right yeah all right I ain't done man I like I, look I think I ain't you done. gave me great stats I'll just make a quick comment here because I don't want to get too far away from what you're going through seventeen starts out of your number five starter would be outstanding 17 quality starts you yes mean? yes 17 yeah. quality starts yes, would be sure would. rbd thank you very much well done or even from your fourth starter really? yeah yes either one of those he had more quality starts in nola he, he had just right? as many as sunny gray and he had more than a whole list of prominent pitchers well bernie that's all nice but listen this guy's junk he's not what they need no he's not what they need as a number one or two starter i agree with you but that's not why he's he's going to be here in 2024. They got to firm up the bottom of that rotation, and if you don't realize that, well, you must not watch a damn game last season. You know, think about it. Anyway, um, but but I love this because you got Tyler, you got Cardinals fans, and a lot of them. I don't know how many, just obsessed with like Tyler Glass now, just obsessed with getting him. And they whiz all over a guy that is going to take the ball five every five days, give you a lot of quality starts and a ton of innings. Tyler Glasnow's never pitched more than 120 innings in a major league season, and he's been around quite a while. Dude had nine quality starts last year. What? I don't get it. Does he throw hard? Yeah. Does he strike people out? Yeah. But how often is he going to take the ball every five days? Why don't you get back to me on that? Because there's nothing in his history that tells you you can count on him to pitch a lot. But people, oh, my goodness. Oh, we just, oh, we got to get that Tyler Glass, though. Anyway. They still might. (laughs) In 2023, Gibson had as many wins as Garrett Cole. He had more wins than, huh, Aaron Nola. (laughs) Blake Snell, Zach Wheeler, Kevin Gosman, Logan Webb, Pablo Lopez, George Kirby. Now, I'm going to repeat something I said a lot through the years. Yes, individual count pitcher wins can be terribly misleading, but I'll say this for Gibson. He earned his wins in 2023. I say that because his ERA in those 15 wins was 2.98. There weren't any. There, there, there weren't cheapies in there. He earned every one of those wins. So to me, they're legitimate, and you can't poke holes in it. Well, he we got good run support. Well, he was 17th in, among American League starters last year in run support, as far as best run support. Okay, mm-hmm. so his run support was good, but only one pitcher on that list of 17, one other pitcher, won more games than. Gibson. My point is, if run support is, oh, well, that, that's a bogus record because he got all that run support. Well, why well, the, uh, why did the other guys who got even more, either the same amount of run support or a higher amount of run support, how many games did they win? Only one of them won more, and it was only one victory more than Kyle Gibson. Only one of them did. All right. Um, his quality start last season was 52%. His quality start rate was 52%. Uh, you know what Sonny Gray's was? 53%. Gibson is junk, right? He's, he's, go, he's trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's bubble gum on the bottom of our metaphorical shoe. Basically had the same um, the same quality of uh, a percentage of quality starts as Sonny Gray. Uh, you know what Aaron Nola's quality start percentage was last year, this past season? 47%. Four, uh, huh. 47%. Gibson had him beat by 
Oh, the great Tyler Glass. No, uh, man. Only Cardinals could pay that $25 million to get that 43% quality start rate from him next year. Ooh. You, Darvish, 42%. You know what, Dylan Cease? Well, we got to give up everybody for him. No, Nobody's off limits. Give them all up for Dylan Cease. You know what his quality start percentage was last year? 36%. Oh. Whoa. Kyle Gibson's 52%, and he's garbage, right? He's junk. He's a dumpster dive pickup. He's a waste of money. He got a higher percentage of quality starts than all these number one, number two starters. So use your brain. Doesn't that tell you that's a pretty good thing to add to the bottom of your rotation? Awesome. Don't you think it's don't you think it's okay? Yes. Um he had more quality starts and a higher quality start percentage than some of the other arms that Cardinals fans are just swooning over. Um, over the okay, because I, I got this pushback. Well, you know that's just one season, Bernie. Okay, let's go over the last two seasons. He had thirty-two quality starts. Let me tell you the names of pitchers who did not have thir- thirty-two quality starts over the last two seasons. Who had fewer than that? Let me give you a few names. Mm-hmm. Sonny Gray, Max Scherzer, Spencer Strider, Blake Snell, Dylan Cease, Shohei Itani, Jesus Luzardo, Edward, Eduardo Rodriguez, Clayton Kershaw, Charlie Morton, Shane McClanahan, George Kirby, Marcus Stroman, and many, many others. And you know what, uh, you know what Gibson's teams were uh, the last two years when he gave a quality start? I don't. 24 and 8. That's a 750 winning percentage. Bernie. I told you them quality starts don't matter. That's something all you nerds made up. Yeah. So a 750 winning percentage, we should just throw that out in the garbage where, you know, the Cardinals picked up this pitcher, right? Yep. Um, Last season, only two major league starters put together this combination. And please uh, listen carefully because it's a few numbers. Only two major league starters put together this combination. At least 190 innings. Uh, at least 32 starts, at least 17 quality starts, at least a 52% quality start rate, at least 15 wins, and a 4.13 fielding independent ERA or better. You know who the two guys were? Chris Bassett and Kyle Gibson. What do they need with this garbage? Sell the franchise. <laughs> Over the oh, Here we got another one. Okay. Over the past two seasons, only eight, this two seasons, only eight major league starters have at least 350 innings, 25 or more wins, 60 or more starts, 32 quality starts, a 50% quality start rate or higher, and a fielding independent ERA of 4.20. Only eight of those guys over the last two years have done that. Framber Valdez, Logan Webb, Merrill Kelly, Logan Gilbert, Zach Galen, Garrett Cole, Chris Bassett, Hmm. and Kyle Gibson. And you got people trashing the signing for a dude that they signed to be a four or a five. My goodness. I mean, (laughs) it's just amazing to me that that people are so – you know what it is what bothers me? I didn't expect people to know this stuff. I don't because I'm a nut and I research everything, okay? Mm -hmm. But what is astonishing to me is even when somebody like me actually does the the research for them and gives gives them the factual findings – They, they, like, refuse to accept it. They still won't acknowledge it. They won't tell me I'm wrong. They just say, oh, I don't care. It doesn't matter. He's, he's junk. They need a top starter. Yeah, I know to do Sparky. That's what we keep talking about. They didn't sign him for that role. So why don't you judge him based on the damn role he's going to have? Does that make any sense to anybody else? I think it makes a lot of sense, as long as the head wires are connected at least somewhat. He's not a number one. He never is, never will be. I don't like it. Now, if the Cardinals don't get their number one, and, and I think a number two, unless they're planning to cast Miles Michaelis in that role, and I guess there's a chance he'll be, at least he'll give you 200 innings, but I'm, I, there's a chance that he'll be better. He'll be better. I don't know. There's at least a chance. 
And I think one thing he's got to do is focus on kitch- pitching instead of being a comedian. And uh, the fact that he won't be the number one starter, presumably, because they're going to get somebody better, maybe that'll make him better because he, he won't feel the pressure. And he felt a lot of pressure because he was the guy, and he was miscast as the guy, and that's why they have to go get another number one guy to put above him. So who knows how that will affect him in a, in a good way. But my point, again, I'm going to keep saying it, if the purpose was to get a consistent innings-eating pitcher who gives you a surprisingly good number of quality starts and you want to put him at four or five, that's a hell of a signing. So if you hear any of your ignorant neighbors, well, don't, don't get in a fight at Thanksgiving. When you're sitting around a table and you hear, you know, like an ignorant cousin or somebody talking about what, what a garbage signing this was, try to set him or her straight. <laughs> we got to try to educate the public here. It ain't easy. Trust me. It's damn hard. When in a very, 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 very minor way, I kind of know what school teachers have to go through now. <laughs> right? Yeah. I can hear him at the uh, dinner table tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, class, is Kyle Gibson, if for the a bottom of a rotation starter, is Kyle Gibson a big upgrade over Dakota Hudson? No. Of course, why would you even say that? He and Hudson are about the same, right? <laughs> nah. I think one of them's really good, and the other guy just got basically got released. I don't know. Oh, I, I broke my word to you all, and I apologize because I, I've, I've been obnoxious. I'm just frustrated. Don't blame Kyle Gibson because, the, you know, the Cardinals haven't gotten yet a number one starter. Like, don't hope, don't blame that on him. He's got nothing to do with it. You see what I'm saying? I do. 